All right, guys, let's continue on with the trade proposal series. And today's team is going to be the Atlanta Braves. They're obviously one of the better teams in the National League, but and they you know they have improved pitching and they have a young dynamic lineup. But there's a spot, and they have an improved bullpen too. But there is a spot that I think in their lineup that could use uh, an upgrade, and that's center field. You know, they have their corner, you know, Acuna, but he's not center field, and they have a bunch of young dynamic players. But um, center field position. Uh, I, I see a trade, and I see, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but the trades that I've been doing are interleague trades, so National League teams trading with the American League team, and vice versa to address needs. And there's a team out there that it's unfortunate they have some young talented players, but they're just not contenders, and we just don't have the pitching. And they've already lost James Paxton. I'm talking about the Seattle Mariners. They lost James Paxton. He's going to have Tommy John surgery again, and yeah, but they have some young dynamic players, but unfortunately they just. They're just not putting it together to become contenders. So I now think it's an opportunity to capitalize on trading one of their young dynamic players to get a, a, a good prospect package in return. He is a top 50 Major League Baseball prospect. So and um, so here's my trade proposal. My proposal is the Atlanta Braves send. Uh, I'm looking at my baseball book. Guillermo Heredia, who's their uh, uh, number three prospect, it looks like. Uh, no, excuse me. He's a center fielder. He's our center fielder. And um, Shea Langoliers, and who's their number three prospect, as a catcher, and Jared Schuster, who's their number seven prospect, a left-handed pitcher. So again, they're sending their current center fielder Guillermo Heredia, who's thirty years old, and uh, Shea Langoliers, their number three prospect, a catching prospect, and uh, uh, Jared Schuster, their number seven prospect, a left-handed pitcher, to the Seattle Mariners for young dynamic player Kyle Lewis. He's 25 years old. He's a center fielder, and he's not a free agent until 2025. And he is a young, dynamic player. He's had some injury problems recently, but you put him in that Atlanta outfield next to you know with Albies and, and and Freeman and Okuna, and that I think he would his his performance would go up another level. I know it's he's fun pairing with Jared Kelenic or Kelenic over in Seattle, but I think this is a better fit for him in Atlanta, and this is an opportunity for Seattle to fill some holes. Get a replacement in center field, or get just get a, a starting center fielder, and get some you know get some get a catching prospect and get a pitching prospect. So they're addressing three holes at once. And again, yes, it'll stink to move one of their young dynamic players, and a lot of times these guys are untouchable. But in this situation, I think it's it's addition by subtraction here. Um, for for obviously for both teams, I think it's a win win. And yes, the, you know it's a three for one package, but this kid is a young dynamic twenty five year old center fielder. And he's got a world of potential. He's got a very high ceiling. I just think his ceiling would, would be uh, reached uh, not only more frequently, but he'll be surrounded by a better team in Atlanta than he would be in Seattle. And I, I just hate seeing young guys you know, go to teams where the talent's just through the roof, but unfortunately they don't have the, the surrounding cast uh, to kind of help them get to the next level and so that they can help these other guys get to the next level. And I'm not saying Seattle stinks, but... They're not the Atlanta Braves, and the Atlanta Braves can bring in a young superstar to that team. You know, do I do I think another reliever might be good for the Braves? Sure, and maybe I'll do another you know thing later on. But and I will be doing my MLB trade deadline prediction, so that'll be coming later on as well. But I think this is a trade that kind of makes too much sense. And again, you know, you're giving depth, prospect depth, controllable prospect depth for the Seattle Mariners for two guys, and they're giving them a, a starting center fielder. Okay, and. In return, Atlanta Braves are getting a young, dynamic player. And they have a top five farm system, so they can afford to give up their number seven and their number four, three prospect without missing a beat. Okay, It's just like the Tampa Bay Rays. They can make a blockbuster trade. So can the Padres. So can the Braves. They can make a, they can make a trade. And this, to me, is kind of a blockbuster-type trade. Not a huge package one, but this is a significant trade if they were to do something like this. And again, it's a trade that I think would benefit both teams. And based on where they're positioned right now. And and the, the NL East is wide open. And there's no real team that's really standing out. I mean, you know, the Mets are good. The, the Phillies are solid. The the, the, National, well, the Nationals are really not going to contend. I think they're going to be the ones to sell off if they stay where they're at, if they continue on that path. There's even a possibility that the Marlins could finish above the, the the Nationals. So it could be. And they could sell off, you know, Max Scherzer. They could sell off a couple other guys, Patrick Corbin and... and you know, clear some payroll space. But um, with that said, the Atlanta Braves have an opportunity to make a trade like this and potentially run away with the division. And I think a trade like this would solidify them as the favorites in the National League East. 
and at least put them in a better position to compete with the teams like the Dodgers and the Padres and some of these other teams to potentially get to the World Series. Now, I know the Padres and the Do- uh, the Dodgers are just kind of twin tower type guys, but teams, I should say, but, um, you know, they, they've had, the Padres have had a couple of recent injuries and they could be vulnerable. I actually proposed a really good blockbuster trade last week for the Padres. That's in the description below, which I think that would put them over the top, put them over the Dodgers, as strange as that sounds or as crazy as that sounds. But this trade here would put the, could put the Braves on equal footing with the Padres potentially, and uh, particularly if it works out. So you let me know what you think. Think about it. Let me know if you think it's crazy, if you like it, if you agree with it. Put a proposal of your own down in the description. I respond to as many people as I possibly can. I like to have good dialogue here. So if you like good baseball content, this is the place for you, especially if you want to have dialogue back and forth with me and other people. So I try to keep this as interactive as possible. So I got a lot of stuff coming and uh, for your enjoyment. So keep watching and thanks so much for your support. And keep in mind, if you haven't heard, I'm doing a giveaway, 2,000 subs. We're getting there. Um, I'm going to pick a person and... uh, I'll get in contact with you, and it'll be a giveaway. It's just my way of saying thank you for supporting the channel, and then I'll do another one at 3,000 and 4,000, every 1,000 after that milestone, and each, each giveaway is going to get bigger. So I'd like to get up to past 3,000 and past 4,000 this year, approaching 5,000 if possible. So we'll see how it goes, but I appreciate you watching. Enjoy the weekend. Talk to you next time.